I wanted to give up. That's a phrase that's come across my mind a lot these past four months. It was something that was always on my mind whenever something would happen that I didn't like. And if you're like me, you know depression can't be reasoned with, nor does it go away easily. That's when I decided to spend my days watching anime and playing games, and I finished the anime Mashoko Tensei, otherwise known as Jobless Reincarnation. It was a story that was revered across the anime community, and similarly seen as a red flag if you enjoyed it. It split people into to two groups and I wasn't sure which side I was going to be on. I knew about all of its pros and cons, but what nobody told me was the message that it told that saved me from giving up. Mashoko Tensei helped me, and this video is a thank you message and a note to everyone who might feel the same as me, hate or like the show, or anyone who wants to listen. Shoko Tensei is one of the realest shows I've ever seen. It taught me one very important lesson. It takes on the role of discovering what human struggle is like, even in a setting that isn't familiar to any of us. You would imagine in a fantasy world with many dangers lurking around every corner, interpersonal and internal struggles would be the least of your worries, but they are the main component. Rudeus is our main character, and he goes through a lot of experiences, some are that are unique to his new world, and others that are universal versatile to all humans, but they both either add on to or relieve the stress levels of interpersonal and internal struggles. It might have to do with fighting against a smuggling operation, or talking and hashing out misunderstandings between yourself and someone else. No matter what it is, it all comes back around to these and many other issues. At the beginning of the show, Rudeus has the fear of going outside his home and facing the outside world. There's the pressure of a traumatic experience stopping him from going out, because if he does, he feels like he'll collapse from the harshness of the pressure and the vulnerability of his weaknesses. These two factors are one in essence, but they feel like separate components because of how particularly strong the driving forces behind them are. They controlled Rudeus in his early years. There's another point of the show where Rudeus fails to save a group of young adventurers. One question why he chose what he had decided to do, Rudeus doesn't know how to answer back. It's a wave of naivety and shameful guilt that rushes over him and consumes him in the moment. Knowing he could have done something, but decided not to do it, or never knowing a con concrete answer to a roadblock is an experience all people go through growing up. These are two specific examples from the anime that expose vulnerabilities in our main character, and I have no doubt that people have felt the same, just in different scenarios. I felt the exact things Rudeus had in those moments, and it might have been from COVID having happened or as a result of a breakup. These things happen to many of us, it only takes on different forms in the frame of different problems. You see the same things happen with Eris. She has her own problems and faces difficulties trying to come to terms with those problems. She's seen a lot as an adventurous type of gal with a need for fighting and fired up activities, but she was just like you and me when we were 15, trying to figure out what we need to do with our lives and keeping up face because we think maintaining our image is the thing that we're supposed to be doing. This has led me to believe one thing. Things can happen at different times during a number of several situations. The thing I've discovered over time is that there are number of factors affecting how we'll be affected by the issue. It's not necessarily about the difficulty of the problem that we are faced with, but our fragility and individual experiences that may make certain situations more pressing or detrimental to our health and well-being. This eliminates the argument that someone's matters might be more important or pressing than your own. But that's not something Mashoko Tensei taught me personally. It's something you can learn from it and gain wisdom about, but it's something you need to understand to get to what my main point is. This is one of the many helpful lessons you learn during the show, but what I learned from the anime is how to move on once you've encountered a lingering problem or a scenario. We've all found ourselves in ruts, and someone watching this might be in the low point of their own. Low points are low for reasons specific to the person going through them. For someone going through a breakup, it can be the fact that an abusive relationship traumatized them. A person longing for purpose can feel useless in their current state, but have no idea how to get out of their situation. Someone with an addiction could still believe the fact that what they have doesn't correlate to an addiction and not being aware of the fact is keeping them in the dark. 
For Rudius, it was the effect of trauma due to certain events. He loses a person close to him, and having been with them for a large portion of his life, leaves lasting effects when that loss is sudden and unexpected. It's enhanced by the fact that she was a lover, and left him after what people would call a passionate experience. As we learn later, this is a trauma that he has to overcome, but in the moment, it feels like the end of the world, as many who were in the scenarios I described before would feel as well. What can we do when it feels like there's nothing left for us? A lot of the time, it's like we're left with this feeling of despair that reprograms our brain to think harsh and difficult to deal with thoughts. When we're left like this, and expected to participate in society as normal, what do we do? Rudius doesn't know at first, so he shuts down and refuses to get up. He's left wallowing in his own sadness, and nothing anyone does can get him up from his bed. It almost feels like an endless cycle at this point, but Rudius is left with the one thing that can get him out of this mess his own thoughts. Being alone with yourself can be often seen as a scary thing because no one likes to be alone. All humans are social creatures in some way, but some of the most enlightened and mindful people are those who are often by themselves. Monks are a good example, cutting any ties to their lives before becoming one and living with themselves in that moment, meditating, going over their own thoughts with their psyche that has limited access to outside input. Rudius digs through his own thoughts, and at some point, you have to become aware of the cycle you're in. He's had countless experiences from his past life and many alone from his current one where these inputs that are in his brain are pinging out to reach any sort of mindfulness that can be reached in this deep abyss. Once you realize what you're going through, then you have to erase all misconceptions you have about yourself, no matter what the insecurity is, and reach new conclusions that give you reason to keep living your life. The process that I've just described is a whole journey in itself that can take any amount of time from days to months to even even years. There are stages to this experience, and Rudius reaches his first stage of mindfulness where he realizes that there are still people who need him in this world. There are things that need to be done, and he can contribute value to these ventures. So he gets up, still bearing this unprocessed trauma and grief, and pushes forward. He learns to participate in society again, and heads forward in his life. If what I just described sounded like nothing important and a bunch of mad ramblings, let me sum it up. Mindfulness is an important quality to adopt and trained throughout our lives. It allows us to catch ourselves when we are about to engage in self-destructive behavior and reassess the situation. This practice of mindfulness is one that is easy to get into, but infinitely harder to master. Especially in the complicated world we live in, mindfulness is something we have to set aside time for, and it can greatly improve the stress load we experience during our low points. Mindfulness is something I've been practicing these past four years, and it is something I feel like I've barely got a handle on myself. It wasn't until I watched this anime that I got reminded about how important it is. It was another input that was pinging my awareness system to wake up and realize that this low point I was going through needed to be dealt with right away. Since watching this anime, I've taken steps to improve my life and reconnect with what I want out of life, both for my personal health relationships, and this YouTube channel. Mushoka Tensei reminded me about mindfulness and how important it is to practice it in your life. You need to be able to know when something is going on with yourself and give yourself a break. When you get a physical injury like spraining your ankle, you don't keep going to work out and run on that injured ankle. You stop, recognize what part of your body is hurting, and do what you actively can to help that part of your body heal. It's the same with your emotional and spiritual self. I could stop the video here, but I lied. Mashuka Tensei also gave me insight on one more important last detail. I believe the story of Mashuka Tensei is to watch the journey of Rudius in his new life. Seeing him go through ups and downs during his time gives a sense of comfort to me, knowing that my pain is not individualized to myself alone. Others go through these ups and downs, something I would describe as a roller coaster, and it can be a different experience dealing with these bumps and slopes depending on how your brain works. For Rudius, his first point of deep depression is characterized by a slow aching that is gnawing away at his emotions and takes just as long of a time to recover from that slow burn. It stabilizes, but he's left at a low point that continues through into the next step in his journey. He starts relieving this weight on his shoulders he's been carrying and recovering from his past trauma. However, something happens that causes his trauma to flare up and he relapses into his deep depression. It gets so bad that a high reactive impulse almost gets him to take his life. It's saddening saying 
letting all of this happen, but it gave me insight. Every human goes through ups and downs, and it just so happens that my low points are characterized by lingering depression and anxiety that doesn't go away. This may be the case, but it doesn't mean I'm the only one in the world who is experiencing this heartache and these moments. Rudius is a fictional example, but he is a character made by an author. The story is written in such a way that I know the author must have some sort of connection to these experiences. The direction of these moments are so well done in the anime that I also have to assume the director and the people who storyboarded the show have some sort of connection as well. So there's a comforting sense in knowing that someone across the world feels the same as I do. And if that's true, there has to be so many more people in the same area where I live going through their ups and downs every day like I am. Mushoko Tensei reminded me that I am not alone in my struggle, and those who are close to us can be going through the same thing we are, and we might not even know about it. There's no shame in reaching out and connecting with others for this purpose, and it can be therapeutic if we do. It's an insight that I definitely needed during my most recent low point. Mushoko Tensei will continue to share these sentiments through its story, and the journey that Rudius will go through. Rudius seems to be at a higher point than he was at the end of the last season, and the beginning of the current one. It gives hope to those that think they can't live their life without constantly suffering eternally. I have no idea where the story of the anime is going, but there will definitely be plenty more ups and downs in this plotline, and it'll be the perfect example for anyone looking for a showcase of the universal human experience. Thank you everyone who worked on any part of Mushoko Tensei, the fans of the work for bringing this to the spotlight, and most of all, anyone watching this video right now for listening to my talk about this. I'm starting a second channel where I have more talks like this regarding health and such, as well as a more personal look at what I do from day to day and what interests me. So if you like this video, you'll probably like this video I just uploaded over there, highlighting the three reasons why you might be feeling lonely. If you could show that channel some love, it'd mean the world to me. As for now, thank you for watching the video and I'll see you all next time.